What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and I'm gonna do a video that I haven't really done in a very long time because times have changed. And I feel like with computer popularity being at its peak right now, this video is directed towards those people considering buying or building their very first computer. So today we're gonna to talk about the five top reasons why you should build your own PC. And we're gonna even include two reasons why you shouldn't. Featuring the Intel 9750H six core processor, up to 64 gigabytes of memory and multiple GPU options, the MAG-15 laptop from Electronics is one of the lightest production and gaming notebooks on the market. Due to its magnesium lightweight chassis and 15.6 inch 144 hertz IPS monitor, the MAG-15 weighs in at just four pounds, while the 94 watt hour battery provides hours of use on a single charge. To see the full spec list of the MAG-15 from Electronics and to see their complete lineup of laptops and notebooks, click the sponsor link in the description below. Now I'm well aware that many of you watching this channel are veterans and you've built your very own computers, maybe dozens, maybe even hundreds, and you're an IT professional. I am talking to the first timer, or at the very least somebody who hasn't done this in a very long time and everything out today is completely new to them. So if you're a veteran, why don't you do me a favor, put your favorite five top reasons why someone should build their own computer and include two reasons why they shouldn't in the comments below. The more information, the better. But I'm gonna go ahead and start talking to you, the newbie or the person who's never done this. First reason I'm gonna put out there I think is pretty obvious, and that is it is easier than it's ever been. We're not talking back in the days when you had COM ports and you had game ports, printer ports, and you had serial buses and all sorts of things that were had to be configured to even work properly. You never had a chance of even getting your computer to post or boot if you didn't have things set properly, even with dip switches and all sorts of other mechanical controls. Those days are long gone. The popularity of computers, as much as a lot of articles want to make it sound like computers are dead, is completely false. And we are at the highest popularity PCs have ever been in. And that's because of obviously the popularity of streaming and the amount of uh, gaming that's out there now. Console ports, consoles are really popular, but PC gaming is more popular than it's ever been. And with that has come the most streamlined process ever when it comes to installing your parts. Your graphics cards can only fit in one particular slot type and your motherboard is written in plain English to tell you which slot you should use. RAM only goes in one place. Your CPUs are easier to install than they've ever been. AMD being still, I think, the mainstream stuff, the easiest CPUs to install, but things are more rugged than they've ever been. ESD protection now built into motherboards. So you can't necessarily accidentally shock it very easily and kill your stuff. Oh, oh, oh. In fact, people constantly refer to it as adult Legos, and I would tend to agree with that. Now, reason number two is that it's cheaper to build than it's ever been. Now, I know a lot of you just got triggered. Like, what do you mean cheaper to build? We've got $1,200 2080 Ti's out there. It's more expensive than graphics cards have ever been. But that's only if you're shopping at the top tier. You're getting much more price to performance benefit down in the 60 series cards or even the 50 series cards that we've ever had in the past. Even in the last five years, we've seen a huge, huge exponential uptick of performance to dollar ratio because of at least some performance and, and battle taking place down in the mid and low tier graphics cards between AMD and Nvidia. Just speaking of graphics cards alone, the CPU competition taking place between Intel and AMD has made that even more competitive to where AMD has brought massive core counts to a, a, an incredible performance to, perform, or to budget ratio than it even was in the past. AMD used to be the brand known for, well, at least it's a good price and it tried when it comes to performance, is now, hey, it's a great price and it's even better performance when you compare it to the competition. Not only that, RAM has finally come down in price. A lot of the price gouging taking place with RAM is gone. The cryptocurrency mining days of graphics cards causing graphics cards prices to quadruple in some instances is over and things have normalized, meaning that you can go down to even Best Buy and buy all the parts that you would need at a fairly competitive price versus on time, online, on time, online retailers, giving you now the fastest, cheapest computers that you can possibly build. Now I know that cheap is obviously in the eye of the beholder and it's gonna be subjective, but the bottom line is performance to dollar ratios across the board are better than they've ever been. Now the third reason out there is you have full control over the parts that go in your system. When you build from an SI or a system integrator, that's basically a company that takes the parts, buys the parts, packages them, puts the system together, and then ships off the system as a whole. And you get it, you turn it on, Windows is greeting you with Cortana and all the spyware enabled that you gotta go in and shut off. But I digress, it's up and running and ready to go. But you have to use whatever parts are available or offered in whatever packages that they're put together in in some cookie cutter format, depending on the SI that you go with. But the fact that you can control your own parts mean you can save a little here and spend a little more there. And although some SIs do give you little radio boxes that you can check to kind of move around the budget, 
you usually are only given two or three options anyway. And then past that, you still are kind of shoehorned into whatever build that they feel that they want to offer. So if you're the kind of person that likes to take control, you like to customize, you like to build things yourself, having all the control over the parts that go into your system make it obviously a very glaring benefit to doing it yourself. Now, reason number four is one that I don't think everyone will agree with, but again, these are my five top reasons and you might differ, which is why I said, put your comments down below. And that is for the learning experience. If you've never done this, there's nothing better than learning something new. I'm like Johnny Five. I am constantly looking for more input. <laughs> more input. They say the human brain is only being 10% utilized and I'm pretty convinced that I'm only using about 7.265% of my brain, which means I'm constantly trying to reach that goal of 10%. I'm not sure I'm ever gonna get there, but I digress. This channel is all about teaching people things. And you know what they say about teachers, teachers are always learners as well. And so I'm constantly trying to teach myself and learn new things, whether it be through DIY, self-learning, or letting people teach me. The experience you'll gain from this will only make you more confident in taking on more tasks and more challenges in the future, and it's a heck of a lot of fun. It's, it's one of those things where you're gonna start looking for reasons to build a new computer, which might be a bad thing. You might start spending your mortgage money and your car payments on computer parts, and that's fine. You're gonna start telling all your friends, hey, you want me to build your computer? I'll build your computer, get your parts, I'll build it. And it becomes more fun to build the computer than to actually game on it. In fact, we build more computers around here than we even game on. Shut up, I haven't done my office yet. I'm working on it. And the reason number five comes to us straight from electronic arts themselves, a sense of pride and accomplishment. Yes, I'm referring to all the hard work that you're gonna put in building your system, paying off in a glorious PC that you can sit there and look at and say, I earned that. All right, that's not a real reason. I just kind of felt like throwing it out there because it kind of goes back to what I just said in the previous reason, which is the learning experience. Once it's done, you're gonna look at it just like I look at Nebula or I looked at Skunkworks or I look at the system I built for Phil or the Destiny 2 PC. Even though I've built quite literally hundreds of computers in my life, I still look at every one I build and I go, you know what, I did that. And sometimes I look at it and go, you know what, I did that. <laughs> but the real reason number five you should build your own PC is the fact that you built it means you can also fix it. One of the problems with buying an SI system is if you just buy the thing and you didn't build it or work on it yourself, if something goes wrong, it means you're gonna be picking up the phone and sitting on tech support and waiting on hold and potentially sending the whole system back to the SI to get something simple fixed simply because you didn't have the knowledge to do it yourself. Trust me, as someone that used to work in, in uh, IT, trying to do over the phone troubleshooting, although uh, IT experts and troubleshooting support agents are usually pretty good at figuring out what the problem is and getting it fixed over the phone, they can only do as good of a job as you help them do by describing the problem and working through the tasks that they give you to try and fix it. And if you have no idea what you're doing whatsoever, the chances of successful repair over the phone is going to be extremely diminished. So the fact that you built it means that you can fix it. You'll understand where the graphics card went, where the CPU went, how the motherboard went in, and what plugged into where. You won't be guessing. And it all ties back to that learning experience. But with all that said, that doesn't mean building your own computers for everyone. So that's why I'm including two reasons why you shouldn't build your own computer. Now, the first reason why you maybe don't wanna build your own computer is one that I just kind of mentioned. It's that whole warranty and support being backed by the system builder. You being the system builder means you've got to warranty it and back it yourself, all the labor, all the, the tearing it apart and getting it fixed, and then hopefully being able to actually diagnose what went wrong. So sometimes people just are not comfortable with that. And what that means is having support, an online tech support, a phone number that you can call for help on fixing your system. And sometimes with, depending on the brand that you go with, a dedicated person that's your liaison to your system with the brand is designed to get you up and running with as minimal downtime as possible. And having that support system to many people is invaluable. And although we talked earlier about uh, SIs being more expensive than, than building it yourself, that's quite different today than it used to be. Back in the day, you used to be able to save 500 or more dollars by building it yourself versus SIs. But with how competitive PCs have become and how competitive pricing has been between all the system integrators, the only way they can get your business is to become less expensive, which means now sometimes the most common overhead price of having somebody build it for you and, and buying it from a company is as little as $100 over doing it yourself. That $100 to many people is way more valuable uh, having a support system than having that in your wallet. So if that's you, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, the last reason why you may not wanna build your own computer is again, directly related to a reason why you said maybe you should. It's all the options. 
Look, PC popularity is at the highest it's ever been. Don't listen to people when they say PC gaming is on the decline. That is a bunch of malarkey. I don't know I said malarkey. It's a bunch of bullshit. But every single company is doubling down with many different SKUs, tons of motherboards with the same socket. And you've got your gaming grading, your professional grading, your budget grade. You've got 36,000 different NVIDIA graphics cards available today. And then you've got all the, the board partners with all of their SKUs underneath all the NVIDIA SKUs. You've got all the different CPUs, you've got different sockets, motherboard types, you've got motherboard chipsets that may or may not be compatible with what's on the, on the shelf today because this CPU might have come out after this motherboard, but although this motherboard is gonna support it, it needs to be updated first, which you can't update the CPU that we bought right there. So you gotta do some sort of a BIOS flashback. And yeah, if you're starting to go, what the hell is he saying? That might be a reason why you don't wanna build it yourself because compatibility and trying to choose the right parts and not waste any money is where the real challenge with PC building is at in 2020. So having all these options is great, but with that becomes a really overwhelming sense of, I don't know what to get. And although there's websites out there like builds.gg uh, from Cable Mod, and then you've also got um, you know PC part picker and all that, and you've got all the forms, what you're gonna find up there are 56,212 different opinions on how you should spend that same $1,000. So sometimes just buying it is easier. But guys, those are my five, technically six, reasons why you should build your own computer and two reasons why you shouldn't. Obviously, just like I just said, there's a million different opinions out there. So please put your favorite five reasons why you should and two reasons why you shouldn't down in the comments below. And let's have a real discussion about building a computer in 2020. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. And stay tuned, we have some build guides coming at some different price points to kind of follow up with this video. Put, putting my money where my mouth is. Literally.